So, uh, my name is Christoph. Um, I have already a company in uh, engineering packaging lines in uh, Belgium and Holland. And a few years ago, we had to uh, install a complete factory of uh, water bottling in the neighborhood of Spa for 10 liter bottles. And the people had bright ideas and they said, we want to sell those bottles to the human aid, to the uh, refugee camps in Africa. And I thought it was wonderful. But coming back from Liège to Brussels, I thought sending the bottles from Liège, Liège to Antwerp and to Africa and then 300 kilometers inside, it cost too much. It will be a bottle of 50 euro each. Nobody will pay 50 euro. And the idea was uh, people need uh, drinkable water everywhere, but it's impossible to put on every corner in Africa or wherever a complete factory. It's too complex. So uh, we went to the uh, Flemish government and we had uh, some subsidiaries to um, make a complete uh, factory inside a six meter uh, container. Uh, you have to know that a normal uh, bottling line is about 80, 90 meters long. So the name Conteno comes from the French word conteneur and O, you see the O, the water coming out of the container. We have on this moment uh, four products, uh, even though we started up in 2009 only as a spin-off of Philpac. Uh, and if you see them, you have, uh, uh, first of all, the aqua trailer. That's something, purification or packaging you can put on a small trailer behind your car. You have the aqua container, which is the complete uh, 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 bottling uh, plant inside the container. You have the aqua village, I will explain later. And you have something in process, which is the aqua drop, I will explain later. Our vision is uh, that uh, related to water, the next 50 years, uh, there will be a huge problem. Uh, even people tell to me, and some studies prove it, uh, they are afraid that the next war will be for water and not for oil. So we have different types of uh, customers. Um, we have the human aid. The human aid can be uh, a very fast uh, need as in disaster relief, uh, as you can see on the pictures. And everybody is asking the first days for drinkable water, even before uh, uh, medicine or, or food or whatever. Uh, human aid means also the refugee camps uh, where there are long uh, running projects uh, to, to provide water to those people. When we started up our company, we had no idea that the armed forces were interested. So uh, starting up with the first year in 2009, we made loss. In 2010, last year, we made 2 million uh, euro benefit. Yeah? Uh, why? Because we were able to sell a lot of equipment to the armies. Uh, armies in the Middle East, uh, but also uh, now we are dealing with the South African Army and we have a very big project uh, running with the United States Armed Forces. We also have some commercial applications. Is it normal that it goes itself? That it goes too fast. Anyhow. Uh, in an aqua container, uh, you can put uh, water purification. Uh, even uh, if you have seawater, then uh, you can purify it by uh, desalination. But we go further. And why do we go further? Uh, a friend of mine was in Goma in Africa a few years ago, and there was a big disaster with uh, a volcano uh, eruption. And there were a lot of uh, people uh, in, in problems. So in the refugee camps, they did not have drinkable water. So. So um, the uh, Germans flew in a container, the, 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 the Belgians, the States, and they had purified water at uh, the lake. But uh, how do we bring the water to the people? And this was really a problem. So they said, let the people come. But the, key, the people are about 20 kilometers from that uh, lake. So they didn't have an idea how to bring the water to the people. So what we do, we provide uh, uh, mobile systems, not only for purifying, but also for packaging. You can pack in a pouch or you can pack in a bottle. This is one of the first uh, uh, supplies we made. Uh, you see a completely closed uh, container where you have to put in a small uh, tube and a cap. And at the other side, you see the bottles filled, cap, closed, cleaned, coming out. 
The process is very simple. First of all, the plastic tube you have to blow. Then you fill the bottle, you close it, put a label up with a date. For the big bottles, you need the handle and the bottle is finished. The Aqua Trailer is a new development from uh, a few months ago um, and it is uh, developed for a fast intervention. So it's a small uh, trailer or a small skit as we call it, uh, which you can put uh, behind your car. Christophe, can you? Yes, uh, thank you. Okay, the Aqua Village um, is uh, developed uh, for uh, uh, Africa. Um, we have now a project with Burkina Faso and the idea is that uh, uh, the people, the women, have to go each day uh, looking for drinking water and uh, they lose a lot of time with it. So with our traveling uh, village, we uh, go uh, one or two weeks next to a village. We will produce water, drinkable water in pouches and this village will go further one week later 200 kilometers further to another village and start up. And after four months, they have to be back to the original town. The Aqua Drop, uh, it is new in development together with the Royal Belgium uh, Military School. It's a unique solution to bring uh, drinkable water wherever in the world within the 24 hours. So we drop uh, plastic bags uh, with a very special shape out of uh, a carrier aircraft and when they touch the ground they will not uh, splash open or more important they will not uh, um, uh, damage uh, infrastructure or children or people so this is uh, about uh, container thank you very much well done. I think this is amazing, you know, and that the topic to be, to be discussed after uh, Christoph's presentation is can an innovative startup survive in a global world? The answer is absolutely yes, but only as long as you continue to innovate. You can't stop. You've got to, I mean, and I think what I like about the, the presentation, the content O oh, business model, is you seem to be continuously innovating. Um, you know, you started off with plastic bottles, now you're doing delivery systems, the, uh, the, the, the pouches, uh, the containers, and clearly, as you say yourself, you know, water is one of the great challenges, particularly in relief situations, disaster situations, third world situations. So I think the more you innovate, the more you, you innovate and the more you constantly try to innovate again and again and again, the bigger the lead you will have. I think it comes back to Alex's business as well and to the, um, the, and to the, 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 the art. I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Maria. Maria. Uh, the more you can do, or be, the more you can innovate, the more you can do things differently, the bigger the advantage you will ultimately have over your competitors. Exactly. Hello? That's exactly what we did. So when we made uh, the big uh, benefit the first uh, year of existence, uh, we uh, calculated that we had to pay about 34% taxes in Belgium on, on a company level. So on 2 million euro, it's about 750,000 euro. So we said, oh, we will stop and slow down the sale and we will develop the products you have seen. Uh, one risk uh, we are taking on that moment, that is you are developing, you are innovating, innovating, but you don't sell. So you don't go on the market. And that's a problem we are facing. Yeah? Uh, also, um, in our uh, perspective, we are a small company in, uh, near Antwerp. Uh, with limited uh, um, internal capacity uh, and so we are now facing the big armies and they, the, the American uh, states uh, armed forces have a pr project for 20 years, maybe 100 euro, million euro uh, uh, turnover. How do we deal with it? Again, I think by continuing to innovate. I mean, I'm not quite sure, you know, too many companies get worried about taxes. You, know, you only pay tax if you make profit. So you, if you don't make profit, you don't pay taxes. I wouldn't worry too much about it. But clearly, the, the, the whole purpose of business or, and being innovative in business is to increase profits. Increased profits allow you to grow the business. Growth creates employment, creates further opportunities. And I think, you know, we didn't start off carrying 75 million passengers. My first year, we carried 200,000 passengers. And what, all we want to do is to survive in Ireland. You know, but 20 years later, by, you know, continuing trying to grow, continuing to innovate, you get there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think clearly one of the challenges is how do you deal with something as huge as the U.S. military? But the military will need your solutions. And you, if, as long as you're creative and you continue to come up with innovative solutions, you'll find a way. Okay. 
And don't you think it's better to link up with a, a bigger company, an international company, with our products? Generally, no. I mean, you know, the, the problem for, and it's a challenge faced by all small businesses and everybody starting up, is, you know, you, no matter however successful you will be, you will face those moments and they will come two or three times in your career. Do I build it myself or do I sell out? Always resist the urge to sell out. Keep building, keep growing. But it's more difficult and it's the harder path. The easy path to say, I'll sell out, particularly in, I mean, in the IT business, and I think the, the buyer for the pharma business is a bit the same. Everybody sells out too quickly. And you leave the profit for the big companies. It's what big companies do well. But you see some brave people you know, uh, who don't sell out, who have a passion and a commitment for their business, a passion and for growing that business, and they're ultimately the ones who will grow and succeed. It will be difficult and there'll be many challenges. But I would urge you all the time, don't sell out. Build, grow, compete with the buggers. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well very done good. for yourself. <laughs>